Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Anthony Sampson, Solution Architect at Walters Clore. Today I'm going to walk you through California Form 3853 in TaxWise. I'm going to walk you through some of the steps that you got to go to to make sure you're properly preparing this form, especially if your client has some exemptions based off their income and things of that nature. So let's kind of go through this here. But before we do this, I know we've got this long paragraph here, but this paragraph is very helpful. It points some things out. But right before we look at this paragraph, you're going to see where it says F1 help for a list of exemption codes. We're going to talk about this in just a brief moment, but I'm going to go ahead and read this to you. So it says, use the full year box or the January through December boxes to identify whether you or another member of your applicable household has MEC. What does MEC stand for? Well, when we hit F1 on our keyboard, it's going to come up right over here in explanation, and that means minimum essential coverage, or if they're claiming an exemption by entering the appropriate coverage or exemption code. If the coverage or exemption applies to the entire year, enter the coverage or exemption code in the full year box and leave January through December boxes blank. So, perfect example, if this person had coverage for the entire year, we've got a code right over here that says, okay, minimum essential coverage for any or all months 2020, enter coverage code Z in the full year, or January through December boxes. So if they had coverage for the entire year, you would go ahead and just put the Z regarding here, right? So you would say pretty much months in 2020, enter coverage code Z in the full year or the January through December boxes. That's definitely something that you could put in there if they had that full coverage. But let's say, for instance, let's say they did not have full coverage. Maybe you know something happened to them during the pandemic, they've got some exemptions. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and look at what those exemptions codes are. So when we hit F1, our exemption codes, our explanation comes up of this particular form. Then I can click right over here on California code codes and type of coverage exemption. And it's gonna list this out with various different type of exemption codes. I encourage you to probably print this out, have it up in your office or have it somewhere where you could easily access and you can see all the various different exemption codes. For example, let's say they lost their job in June and they didn't get a new job until August, so they got a three month gap, right? So three month gap, we, we use code C as an exemption code. Or maybe they're a non-resident, right? Or part year resident, that's an exemption, E. Or maybe they spent over 330 days consecutively out of the United States or for 12 months out of the United States, that's code D. So there's various different exemption codes that you can go through to see which one is the most applicable to your client and you can definitely take a look at that and go through that. So so we've got that in place. Now let's kind of walk through this here. Now, so I'm going to do two scenarios. I'm going to say, okay, our scenario here with our customer works for ABC company and he made $50,000 and right now he, he's getting a refund from the federal and he's getting a $130 state balance. That's what he owes. So let's walk through the scenario on the form 3853 as if let's say he did not have health insurance. So we're going to go through here and you, it, like it says, you must enter code X in the full year or January through December boxes. This is if they did not have that coverage, right? If another person, you remember, applicable households does not have minimum essential coverage, we're gonna use X. So we can just put an X right here, say, no, nope, he didn't have insurance. He has his dependent, his little daughter over here, Lisa. They didn't have any insurance. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put an X right there. And then on the next worksheet, we've got it calculated right over here. Now, these are some answers that we need to address. Share responsibility penalty worksheet. Can someone claim he has a dependent? No. Did you or anyone in your house have minimum essential coverage? I'm gonna change that box to no. And then it's gonna ask, uh, did you or someone else in your house or regarding their dependents? We're gonna go ahead and say no, so they didn't have minimum essential coverage. So the software is calculating, TaxWise is calculating exactly what that penalty is. So you can see, okay, for one adult over 18, $750 for any dependents, anyone under 18, it's $375. So all together, their penalty is $1,125. But let's take a step further. Let's look further down at a lower portion of the form. Let's kind of walk through this here. So when we see, okay, step three, it's applicable household income. We can see our household income is $50,000. When we move further down, there's some additional calculations that vary based on your income. In step four, the percentage of the income amount. So we got $50,000 is the applicable household income, but there's a filing threshold. So the filing threshold based off the numbers that we've gotten here is $31,203. So the amount that's above that filing threshold is $18,737. When we scoot further down, we can see directly here that the state of California wants you to multiply that amount above the filing threshold by 2.5%. And this is important in calculating what that penalty is. Now, another component that's in this in step five is, is the state average bronze plan premium. So based off on um, were you required to complete worksheet A, the answer is no. But we can see when we scroll further down over here that the state average bronze plan premium amount is $6,936. So what TaxWise is doing and what the format, what the state of California is asking me to do is, okay, here's our flat dollar penalty. Here's the amount that's a percentage above that filing threshold of $468. 
we can directly see okay which one is the, which one is the higher numbers the four hundred sixty eight dollars or the one thousand one hundred twenty five dollars but the flat penalty is actually higher so that's the amount that California wants to um, penalize the taxpayer for now when we look further down into this we can say okay is that penalty higher than the, the state average bronze premium plan because if it can't be higher than the state um, bronze plan premium plan so it's one thousand one hundred twenty five dollars so I come back over here to my Cal 540 and on my California 540 page you can see that $130 balance that we had owed that I mentioned earlier when we scoot further down we come further down over here here's that penalty $1,125 penalty is what they have uh, in this case now but let's kind of go a little bit further let's kind of drill down here further now how do we get out of this let's come back and look at our exemption codes so let's see which one applies to that particular client maybe this client is not a resident or something like that or maybe this client maybe this client was incarcerated for a period of time or maybe this this client's you know had a general hardship right so I'm gonna use go ahead and use K as a good example as an exemption code so let's come back to tax wise and let's come over to our worksheet page 3853 page 2 and I'm gonna take that box X out here for a second I'll take that X out here for full year and let's say we're and we're gonna go ahead and put the K in here but remember we had that they actually had coverage for a period of time let's say that they, I'm sorry that they actually had they were employed for a period of time so I'm gonna go ahead and put that let's say they were employed for Z Z Z but then they started to go through that maybe they got let go from their job so when they got let go from the job, they went through a hardship. So we're going to go ahead and put K, K. Remember, we're using the K because the K is right over here. General hardship, you experienced a hardship that prevented you from obtaining coverage under a qualified health plan. There's that K that's right there. All right. Now, you may have a situation where someone may have two exemptions that may apply to them. Let's say a perfect scenario is... You know, we have one for a short-term coverage gap, right? So you've got three continuous months. So you, you, we could also have a C as well. So that can also give us a period of time where they can have less. So let's, maybe they have a short-term coverage gap, but they weren't able to find another job and get benefits. So then it stayed K throughout the year. So that you can have some scenarios where there's two codes, exemption codes that you're using at the same time that's available to you that you can do that. And that's why that second line is here, the second area here. If you have more than one exemption code for any given month, enter the second exemption code here and we're gonna go ahead and use this dart over here let's just say they had coverage for a period of time but then we're gonna go ahead and put the k they fell into hard times and we put those exemption codes on there now that we put those exemption codes on there we're going to come back to our our worksheet over here and then we can go ahead can someone claim me as a dependent no did you or everyone in your household have minimal essential coverage every month of 2020 the answer is no did you or someone else in your house have minimum essential coverage or qualify for a coverage exemption so the answer is yes so since they qualify for a coverage exemption we go ahead and change that and since they qualify for coverage exemption we go ahead and address that and then we can go ahead and take this off and you see how when we took it off it comes back to the 130 dollars balance that they owed and then we can come back to our california 540 page three and it is over here at zero. All right, so that's definitely one scenario that you definitely wanna pay close attention to. Now, if they do have an exemption that comes from the actual, from the state or from the government, maybe they maybe applied for an exemption code. So right over here, you can definitely put an ECN number directly on this if you applied and got granted an ECN exemption code number from the marketplace, you can put that ECN number here. All right, now in some case scenarios, let's come back to this penalty over here, for instance. Let's say you're talking with a client and you're trying to figure out what that penalty is. There's actually a website. California has a website set up, ftb.ca.gov. When you go to their website, you go through that newsroom under healthcare mandate, you can go through a penalty calculator and estimate what that penalty will be for that customer. So when you come to penalty estimator, it's a perfect example. Will, will you be reporting your health coverage on your 2020 tax return, which you will file in spring of 2021? To avoid a penalty, you will need to qualify for health health coverage for each month beginning January 1st, 2020 for yourself, your spouse, your domestic partner, or your dependents, right? So we can go through and just kind of walk through this process and see, okay, what that penalty would be. So we're gonna say, okay, for tax year 2020, and now if we can't be claimed as a dependent, we're not gonna check that. Let's say our filing status head of household, let's just put our birthday in there. All right, number of dependents, you're gonna be claimed one, and then enter your household income. So we're gonna put that 50,000 in there and hit next. And now we get our date of birth, so uncovered for the whole year, or let's say they had coverage for just a few months, and then maybe they lost their job, right? Same thing with the dependent. Let's put the dependent's date of birth in there, 
right? So they had just those few months of coverage and then they no longer have coverage, estimate the penalty. The penalty is $375. So you can use this as a tool to calculate and estimate what that penalty is. Now there's other factors that may come into play, but this is definitely a good tool that you can use to estimate what that penalty amount is.